Hello. In this video, I'm going to walk through a demo of an open function DHS2 integration. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with DHS2, it stands for District Health Information System. It's an open source platform used for data collection, management, and analysis of health information data, and it's been implemented by over 60 different countries. Now, a challenge that we've faced in, in interacting with a number of organizations hoping to connect with DHS2 is that a lot of data that they want to input into DHS2 is coming from different data sources, whether that's mobile data collection tools like Open Data Kit, Cobol Toolbox, maybe different CSV files or, or different database information system. There, there seems to be this common use case of how to share and upload information into DHS2, as well as how to extract information from DHS2. So with Open Function, um, we're able to do this leveraging the integration platform. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Open Function is an integration platform designed for the social impact space. And it is used to help automate routine tasks and streamline information flows between the tools that organizations like you are already using. So if connecting with DHS2, your current data process might look something like this. Perhaps you have a set of CSV files saved on your computer where on a monthly basis uh, a data entry staff member is in charge of transforming that data. So maybe reformatting the CSV file to make sure the date is in the right order, um, that, that yes and no questions are converted into Boolean true-false values, you know, reformatting validation to, to ensure that when you upload that file to DHS2, there will be no errors in that data import process. Um, the CSV file, you know, that might come from Excel files on, on your computer, uh, maybe emailed to you from your partner, or it could be generated from different mobile apps tools, so maybe you're using Open Data Kit to collect data through mobile devices and then you generate a CSV output that you would then want to upload to DHS2. So this process looks different depending on your organization, um, but what Open Function can help to do is to automate this typically very time-consuming process and, and streamline that information flow so that way the time that you usually spend making sure that data gets from one data source to your destination DHS2 system um, can then be spent instead on actually reviewing the information that is in DHS2 once it's uploaded. Um, and, and the same for the reverse, you know, we can use Open Function to automate extracting data from DHS2 and then loading it into another system. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a demo of taking Google Sheets and, and connecting Google Sheets to DHS2. Um, but Open Function can, can be used to integrate with a number of applications. So Open Function can connect with anything with a REST endpoint or a webhook service. So it is a middleware tool. Um, so if you're using you know, Open Data Kit, Cobol Toolbox, another database system, maybe you have CSV files um, stored on, on your, your local computer, Open function can still be used to automate that process of loading that information into DHS2. So when connecting source apps to open function, it usually looks like one or two ways. The first is to set up the source app to automatically forward data to open function. So a lot of applications have this data forwarding feature built in. So for example, in Comcare, you can, you can set up a project to automatically send or or post data to an open function unique inbox URL. So anytime you sign up for open function, you get a unique endpoint URL that you can push data to. The, the second approach might be to use open function to actually fetch data from your data source. So in the second scenario, perhaps you've been, you periodically upload a CSV file of, of source data to an FTP server. Um, so open function can be configured to go fetch that CSV file from your FTP server, um, or maybe you've uploaded that CSV file to a tool like Dropbox. So open function can go in and fetch that CSV file from that source, and then load it into your destination system like DHS2 according to the instructions that you define in open function. So that's that second approach, and we can discuss what that looks like depending on you know, where your data source lives. Um, but let's check out an example of, of the first approach. So I'm going to take a look at Google Sheets as an example of how we can set up Google Sheets to automatically forward data to open function. 
and then take a look at how we can use Open Function to then process that data received by Google Sheets and, and send it onwards to DHS2. Um, and so why Google Sheets? You know, the, some organizations that we're working with sometimes, you know, are taking CSV files, um, but some organizations wanted to go ahead and load those CSV files into Google Sheet formats so that way they can be stored on the cloud and then shared between relevant team members. Um, this way we can also set up the Google Sheet to then publish new data to open function anytime the sheet is manipulated. Uh, so an example I'll walk you through, every time we add a new row to our Google Sheets, every time we register a new beneficiary, we're able to automatically send that new information to open function and then onwards to DHS2. So in this demo, we'll be creating tracked entity instances of beneficiaries that we've registered um, in our DHS2 system. So let me go ahead and, and flip over to our, our Google Sheet example. So here I'm looking at my beneficiary data source. So again, this might be a CSV that you've uploaded to your Google Sheet format, or maybe you're just sharing this document and adding new rows. Um, so the example might be perhaps you have a survey form, like a Google form connected to your Google Sheet. Um, so for example, if I go ahead and registered Anna Simmons, um, we want her information to show up as a new row in my Google Sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and specify new beneficiary information, but maybe your beneficiary information is coming in from other data collection tools that are connected to, to this Google Sheet. So when I go ahead and submit this form, it's going to create this new row. I can see Anna Simmons has been registered in my Google Sheet. Um, and, and this Google Sheet has automatically then forwarded this new row of information to my open function project. So how we did that in Google Sheets is if you go to Tools and Script Editor, you can write a script. Um, so that's, that's custom code that you can then tell Google how to, which data from your Google Sheet to send and, and how to construct that data and then how to, how to format it before sending it to, to a new destination. Um, so on our website, we have some documentation on how to do this and Google has lots of documentation as well. Um, so here we're, we're building a post request. Um, so that's, that's taking this information from the Google Sheet, packaging it in JSON format, and posting it to an open function endpoint URL. Um, so this function that I've defined here, for example, specifying which column headers um, should I send to open function. So I can see that I'm, I'm sending surname, first name, sex, and I'm taking that from the first column, second column, third column, so on in my spreadsheet. And then I will build this as a JSON payload and post it to this open function inbox URL. So again, this is a unique endpoint URL specific to your project. So if you sign up for open function, you're given a unique inbox URL and that could be used as an endpoint to send post requests to. And so I have this script running on my sheet. So that way, as I've added new rows, so for example, I just added Anna Simmons um, at 12 o'clock, that will automatically post to my open function inbox. So, so in this way, we automate it. But again, different source applications, this forwarding looks a little different, but that's how it looks like for, for Google Sheets. So then let me go ahead and fit to my open function project. So when you first click into your open function project, the first thing you'll see are jobs. Now jobs are the instructions that you give open function for what to do with the data that, that is received. Um, so here you can see I have two different jobs. One which is, is telling open function how to create tracked entity instances in DHS2. The second which is actually used to fetch data from DHS2 and then load it into another system. So if I take a look at this create tracked entity instance job, I can see that for any messages that come in with the form ID beneficiary data, um, Open Function is going to log into my DHS2 system that I've connected, so in this case this demo account, and then it's going to follow the steps or the instructions that, that I've outlined here in the job. So jobs are essentially just JavaScript, um, so anything you can do in JavaScript, you know, you can, you can build that into your, your job. Um, but a lot of times jobs might just be as simple as mapping source values um, to, to where you want that data to flow in your destination system. Um, so for example, in DHS2, if we want to create a tracked entity instance, I know I need to specify first name 
and, and surname of that tract entity instance. And then I, I maybe I want to also enroll that tract entity instance in a program. So if that's the case, then you know in this job I've also specified enrollment information. So I want to be sure to, for, for every tract entity instance I'm enrolling them in this specific program um, and, and providing these dates here. Um, and, and here I'm taking the, the first name and the last name from all incoming data. Um, but what you can choose to do is modify this job further to include other attributes. Um, so for if, for example, I wanted to also map uh, the registration location to, to my tract of the instance, um, what I can do is then choose to specify the attribute that I want to map to. So let's say um, whatever that attribute ID is in my Dages 2 system, um, I would paste that there. And then I would say, you know, from where in the source data am I mapping this location ID? Um, so to find this, we have to actually look at messages that are coming into Open Function and take a look at, at the format there. So anytime data is received by Open Function, it, it shows up as a message. So let me flip over to my messages. So now I'm, I'm looking at my Open Function inbox. And anytime data is posted to my open function inbox URL, it flows in as a discrete message. Um, so a message could be a row in my Google Sheet. It could be a form from my connected mobile data app. So if I click into this message that was received at noon, um, there I can see that Anna Simmons information that was automatically forwarded from my Google Sheet. Um, so we can see here that this message came in um, corresponding to that new row that I added here in my Google Sheet. And, and I can see the body, so what, what parameters were actually received by Open Function. Um, I can see that it has the potential to, to run this correct, create tracked into the instance job. Um, but if I look at runs, I can see that it has not yet run. That means Open Function has not automatically processed its information to be forwarded to DHS2. And that's because my job hasn't been set to automatically process. Um, so if I flip back to my job, I can see that Automatic processing is off, um, but I am mapping these different values. So I'm, I'm hoping to take the first name from the message and map it to this attribute, and take the surname from, from the message and map it to this attribute. Um, so if I was to edit my job and open up the power editor and actually show matches, um, here, if I click on that, I can actually see an example message that came in. Um, so if I wanted to map you know, location to the, the location ID attribute, whatever that was in my Dages 2 system, then what I can do is just take a look at what location looks like. Ah, there it is. Location and map that in. And I can modify my job and, and continue to add additional attributes as I wanted. So for example, if I wanted to add map phone number, let's say in Dages 2 I was tracking phone number I would copy and paste whatever that attribute ID is for that phone number attribute. Um, and then I would take a look at where that source value is coming from. So here I can see that it's actually cell phone number. Um, so then I would want to map cell phone number to, to my DHS2 attribute and so on. Um, and again, as I said, that you know we can build in custom JavaScript into this job. So you can look at our documentation on how to do that um, to, to transform this value. So, you know, if, for example, this phone number was coming in with no hyphens, but I wanted to add hyphens, I can reformat this accordingly. Um, or if any time sex came in as female or male, but I wanted to load it into DHS2 as M or F, then in my job above here is I can write those transformation rules. So with the open function job, it can be as simple as mapping source values to destination values, or I can really use it as this transformation data formatting tool as well. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my job, and I'm going to go back to that message. So if you remember, um, in our Google spreadsheet, I, I created that beneficiary. It came into the Google spreadsheet as a new row, and that script I've set up on my Google Sheet automatically forwarded this information to Open Function as this message. Um, but because we haven't set this job to automatically run, I have not then run this job or the set of steps to then process this data and send it onwards to DHS2. So let's go ahead and do that. If I go ahead and, and run this job, 
Then if I scroll down, I'll see the status of that job. So did open function successfully create a tracked entity instance? So if I click into the run, I can see the log of that transaction. Um, so I can see that, yep, open function went to post tracked entity instance data. Here are the attributes that it posted and it got a success response from DIHS2. Um, so in this way, I can use runs or run history to, to monitor the success of my, my data integration and, and monitor whether each time a, a job is executed, if it successfully processes that data. So then if I flip over to DHS2, so here I am in my tracker capture app. Um, so I'm in Sierra Leone looking at this um, program, child program related to this org unit, um, this MCHP hospital. So if I refresh my page, I should see that data flow in. Yep, there's Amos, Anna Simmons there. Um, so, so in this way, what we've been able to do is in using open function, um, every time a new row is added to our Google Sheet, it's automatically forwarded to open function. This open function job runs to create a tracked entity instance and to enroll um, the tracked entity instance into a program. And then we can see that information accordingly. So there's Anna enrolled in this child program there. So that was a demo on, on how we use open function to automate the flow of information from Google Sheets to DHS2. Um, but again, open function is that middleware tool that can connect with a number of applications that you're using. Whether it's sending information from CSV files, from different mobile data collection tools, other database systems to DHS2, or even fetching information from DHS2. So let's say taking indicator information from DHS2 and loading it into another system or analysis tool. Open function is there to help and, and help you streamline that, that flow. And so that way your staff members can stop worrying about kind of the manual and time intensive process of, of loading that and transferring that data between systems and can instead really focus on, on what the data means once it's actually loaded into systems like DHS2. So go ahead and, and, and check out our site at openfunction.org. You can sign up and, and test this out yourself or, or reach out to your team, um, our team for, for additional demos or, or support with connecting your relevant source applications. Our online documentation site does provide a lot of information and example job snippets for you know, how to draft some of these jobs, such as create tracked entity instances. Um, but don't hesitate to reach out if you do have any questions. Thanks for watching.